Hi, my lovely attendees of this virtual conference. I'm so excited to be part of this. And today I actually will introduce you to your unique self through the eyes. Yes, I read the eyes. I'm an iridologist. I'm a certified comprehensive iridologist. And today I want to show you how the eyes can reveal your personality traits, emotions that get stuck with certain organs, and some dietary lifestyle issues that you have since you were born. So listen up, and I'm going to start a great presentation for you. I'm Vicky Lutus, the Master Herbalist. Comprehensive, uh, comprehensive Certified Iridology Instructor, Diplomat of Iridology, President of the IPA, which is the International Iridology Practitioner Association. I also have held three years long the award now for the best wellness program in my area. And I'm also an author of the upcoming book, Unstoppable Women, Overcoming Mediocrity. Today, I want to introduce you to your unique self. How do I do that? I'm looking through your eyes and find out who your unique self is. So what is iridology actually? Iridology is nothing new, but unfortunately it has been, um, you know, less known in America as it has been in um, Europe. So as you know, with my accent, I'm from Vienna. So I want to introduce you today a little bit about yourself. So my reason to do this whole talk is that you find out by taking a look at your eyes one more time after this talk who you really are. So we study the iris and the pupil and each person has a unique pattern of fiber structures and colors. Iridologists interpret these fibers to assess genetic strength and weaknesses. So the history of iridology. It's not that I just came up with this iridology. It's been around for thousands of years. Thousands BC Babylonians knew how to read disease from the eye. So 1826, Ignaz von Peseli was the European founder, medical doctor Buddha, from Budapest, Hungary. He has been uh, very involved with iridology and he has done a lot of research for us. And he started as an iridologist actually, but he wasn't being taken serious. So later on, he went back to college to get a medical doctor's degree. But his last words were, here is the sign, but where is the disease? Unfortunately, in 1826, he did not know that he was looking actually in your genetic DNA blueprint. So that means your mom and your dad have certain weaknesses in specific organ system. And it might have not happened yet that you have problems in it, but you carry a weakness in it. So that doesn't mean when I look in your eyes that you, you know, have diabetes, but it means that you have a weakness in a pancreatic area that could turn into diabetes if you do not use prevention as your tool to prevent things from happening. So. 1929, Dr. Bernard Jensen, he was the American founder from um, where he is, he was the one who really truly brought uh, iridology into the American um, knowledge. He translated a lot of books into English language and he dedicated his, himself 50 years of his life to the research and study. So most of the books that you can find here in America have been probably written from Bernard Jensen. He was the one who created the most famous Irish chart because he took on 20 or 30 different charts and combined them to one. Gladly, his um, daughter-in-law has continued the legacy of Bernard Jensen, and she has been on the board of the International Audiology Practitioner Association for quite a while. Well. 1965, Joseph Deck is called the father of modern iridology. So what happened is Bernard Jensen went um, and taught lots of iridology in America, but meanwhile in 1965, more research has been done and is being called now the constitutional iridology, which means it's now clear that the genetic predispositions are shown in the eyes and not the current disease. So it is an established blueprint of the iris. So when I have um, 
uh, mom come to me and to my office, I encourage her to bring the children so we already can tell if they have a strong stomach or if they have a weaker digestive system, if they have more issues in their skin or maybe an elimination of the kidneys. They might not exhibit any problems until they are like probably in their mid-20s, mid-30s or mid-40s, but it's good to know for the mother already where to take care of it through the correct food choices. So today, the IPA is the International Oral Practitioner Association. We try to dedicate the, to find the newest research and we collect all the information from the American, European, Russian, Australian, even Asian area has done a lot of research in this field. So we founded this uh, organization to standardize iridology in the world and especially here in America. Unfortunately, a lot of iridology has been taught from one person to the next and half of the things weren't true, but unfortunately it's got lost in the, in the grapevine here. So in this case, what I want to tell you is make sure if you do ever want to get a consultation from an iridology, that person should be associated with the IPA since we have an accredited institute, which means we ask to have each of our uh, certified iridologist to get the credit in credits in every two years because there's continuous research going on and we want to make sure that all our certified iridologists stay up to date with the current research and they don't teach any iridology that has been in the 1960s or 70s. I don't know if you go to a doctor I don't want to get a heart surgery from somebody who did it in the 1970s things have been improved, things have been changed. We found out what wasn't right and what wasn't, what was right and what wasn't, wasn't right. So it's the same thing in the history of iridology. So, but today I don't wanna bore you too much about the history and the correct iridology. I wanna give you some little tips with my, um, with my presentation. So at the end, you have found out some information about yourself. So there are three components. Most likely people know about the physical, the nutrition, herbal guidance. Also about the emotionally and more and more emotional etiology readings are being done because we can see the connection between organ and specific emotions and feelings. And then we have now the third part, which is the spiritual etiology. And that one shows the chakras and spiritual symbols through the eyes. Yes it's happening. So let me guide you a little bit through what that means. Well, here's this iridology chart. As you can see, it was developed by Bernard Jensen, but revised by Ellen Jensen. So you can see there's a right and left eye, and you can see that the eye is mirroring itself. So there's the thyroid, here's the liver, and this is exactly what we're looking at. It. But what we walked away from is that we point out every single sign that we see, and at the end, a client thinks they're beriddled with a million problems or disease. And so that's where we want to walk away from this kind of iridology. Nowadays, we have grouping or we put specific signs together that tells us the story of the whole. So this is what I'm going to show you today. So for example, very, very basic day for you. I should show you our three color constitutions. We have lymphatic eyes, we have mixed or hazel eyes, and we have a pure brown eyes. With each eye, we found out from intense research over hundreds of years now that there are certain problems they have more likely when they have blue eyes or hazel eyes or the pure brown eyes. Today, because this is just uh, you know a slight little uh, information about urology, I want to just go a little bit into the blue eye today. This information exists for the hazel as well as for the brown eyes, but today I picked the blue eyes. So if you happen to have a blue eye, okay, then the general physical weakness would be that we found out from all the research that people filled out when they have blue eyes and we asked them what kind of uh, symptoms they have. We looked into their eyes and, and focused on the area that we can see more brown, more, more um, gray or more blue, more blue 
kind of looks like there's a fog over it. See that? You can also see little pebbles here. We call them tophies. This area is right here in the lymphatic system and the skin. So no wonder that they have most likely issues of having a mucus buildup within the lymph system. So they have hyperactive immune system. They are a little bit more on the acidic pH balance. So I don't know if you understand what that means, but our body can sometimes get too acidic when we eat too many acidic foods. So they have from birth on the tendency to be just generally more acidic. So they always have to work on being more alkaline. This could, those three signs could lead into allergies, infections, skin issues, kidney stones, psoriasis, arthritis, bronchitis fluid retention. Those are just certain ailments or disease, but as an iridologist, I'm not getting so caught up with what symptoms they have. I'm just like focusing on what their weaknesses are so we can rebuild it. And the weaknesses were the lymph, the immune system being too hyped up and the acidicness. So my suggestions are most likely food. Food is my medicine for everything. And also some slight herbal suggestions. Herbs, they're nourishing, almost like food grade herbs. So they're not too aggressive with the reaction. So when I see uh, this person who have very, very bright white eyes, then they have more inflammation and more acidicness. So I'm of course suggesting a low acidic diet cold alkaline diet, I will avoid mucus forming foods for them. And mucus forming foods, unfortunately, are white sugar, white flour, and milk products. And see that I say white flour, I'm not saying just the, the gluten, I'm saying white flour, because even if you have bean flour, it should be still have some um, whole grains in there. So what that means is also reduce the intake of coffee and alcohol, because we all know that's too acidic. And what can we do now, not just taking things out, we can include the celery, the parsley, water, mel melon, lemon water, excellent kidney cleansers, and very alkaline. And then also keep hydrated. I know that's so, so basic, but honestly, blue-eyed people do not feel very thirsty. When they feel thirsty, they're already too dehydrated. So that's where the warning comes. So that was just one example. I don't want to go on and on now, go into the hazel or the brown because there's not so much time. But if you are interested, just call me up and I give you a consultation via the Zoom calls. Next part I want to introduce you to is the emotional one. I told you there are three components of iridology. So we first had the physical one. Now we have the emotional one. So emotionally is about the connection between the organ and the feelings. So not only do we have a physical map, we now have an emotional map. As you can see, just kind of a little bit here, gallbladder, anger adrenals, fear, and trust issues. So what that means is we also want to teach our clients who come to us as an iridologist that the matter of a, a physical weakness is not always in the physical layer of the body. It can also be an emotional layer. So to keep completely um, equanimity and health, I also want to teach to my clients to notice what kind of feeling is attached to that organ that they inherited weaker or already shows, zone, uh, shows signs of uh, hyperactivity. So holding on to emotions can slow down our metabolism and sabotage the outcome of any diet as well. So a lot of people sometimes also have like issues, maybe they can gain weight or they lose weight and that's definitely where we wanna go into the emotions. Here's just a few organs that is attached to specific uh, uh, a feeling. So in adrenal glands, here you can see that, trust and fear. So it's about worrying all the time or prolonged fear. And unfortunately, no wonder we're going into adrenal fatigue right now in this whole 2020. That year from March on was just a fearful, worrisome year because of COVID. Breast is a feeling of emotional nurture. So if you have issues with breast cancer, then go think about it. If you have given too much nurturing to others and you never get nurtured, then the gallbladder is about hatred, bitterness, inability to forgive. And then the heart is 
not feeling loved, it needs to be appreciated. Pancreas is feeling a little jealousy, feeling being overlooked. Kidneys is the inability to forgive, fear, confusion, and skin is who is getting under your skin. So those are just like moments of feelings attached to a specific organ that I want my clients to kind of revisit and think about who do I have to forgive. So how does this work again? A little information again for you. Well, here you can see when we see fibers are more spaced out, look like an oval circle, seem bright in colors, this can indicate physical and emotional sign. See how it is here, like everything is straight out. There is like an opening, that's kidneys, and here is the heart. So when I talked to this client, I said, was there anything that you can consider of not feeling loved? And of course, that client immediately remembered that there was this huge, huge broken heart of having an engagement broken literally just a few weeks before the wedding. So that can definitely give you a broken heart. Then here, you can see here that a little bit of inflammation, so hyperactivity. This person came to me actually with physical pain of knee and leg problems. And after talking to him uh, about the emotional feeling attached to your knees and legs is about not moving forward, not taking the step forward into the future you want to be in. And it turned out that unfortunately his dad passed away and had to take over the business from his dad. So he never actually could become could get into the power of what he visualized about his um, future profession. He was being pushed into the direction of having to follow that business that his dad left behind. So he, he never stepped forward or stepped out of this because he wasn't happy in it, but he couldn't bring it over his heart to tell his mom. So through questions, like you see that your dogs can find out if there has been a specific emotion that could have caused a weakness physically within the body. So if I want the, to teach that, uh, uh, help this person to have no knee problems and leg problems, of course, I would go into specific, you know, herbal herbs for the knees. But I also will ask him if there is, is does he feel stuck? Like he, he's not stepping forward. He's not stepping into his future. So let's go move on. So what can I do with that information for those clients? Well, like you saw with physical uh, issues, I can give food recommendation, choose recommendation, herb recommendation, but with emotional, I give meditation information, I give emotional freedom tapping. And nowadays there's also a new product out that's called the Healy, H-E-A-L-Y, which gives you certain vibrational frequency through your phone on bracelets that can redirect that constant worry mind or fearful mind or trust issues so if you're interested just like email me okay so now let's go further what i can find out emotionally i can also find out a little bit more the personality and behavioral issues. So yes, you were born like this. So if your mom wonders why you are so different to your siblings, well, because you have a different pattern in your eyes. You came into this lifetime to have a different experience, to have a different, so you have a specific personality trait. So when you look at this here, you can see here in, the, in this, we're looking now at the lines here, that's called anxiety titanic. When the fibers go so straight out, you know, then we call them neurogenic, which is all about the nervous system. And when we look here, you can see slightly those loops. So if you have loops, you're a little bit more a polyclandular type, which is also more a creative mind. So again, I picked one kind of sample. So we're not um, talking for two, three hours. <laughs> I mean, I like you to talk to me for three hours, but I don't know if you want to listen to me. <laughs> so this one is anxiety tannic, as you can see. It's almost like this mind is so busy that it has so many highways around it that you just circle and circle and circle and circle and circle and circle and the soul can't really find itself because it's too busy doing and being. And that's exactly what happens. This is a straightforward type E personality, very successful, driven, ambitious, motivated. The soul is a little busy to, with the doing, may not stop paying attention to itself and they're unwilling to slow down. So remember, this is their 
their their strong side this is how it is so what what will i teach as an iridologist i will teach them the opposite direction because you know what at the end it's always equanimity we want to be yin or yang so if there's too much yang energy then we want to be going a little bit into calmness so i want to teach them with the lifestyles not just with the foods right that they should do some meditation or not a boot camp that they should eat more a low sugar diet because they're already so hyped up they don't need that energy from the sugar to drive their mind even more into uh, productivity. Same with the stimulation drinks of coffee and energy drinks. I want to teach them about taking a walk in nature and quietness or experiment with yoga and breathing techniques. Again, that doesn't come naturally, so we want to balance out their hyperactivity. So here is just a lot of lot of fun facts that you can find out about yourself if you look in your eyes. What we know in iridology is that specific uh, you can tell if somebody's a right brain thinker or a left brain thinker. Okay, so what that means is when you are having more signs on the right eye, you're actually more of a left brain thinker. And left brain thinker is see consistency, they like um, to know what's going on, they're more mathematically, more organized, more focused, and they're all in little boxes. When you're more right brain oriented, they are seeking variety, creativity, they, they're more listening to themselves and create new things. So, right, so if, if you don't have as many signs, then you're the opposite brain, remember, because you're crisscrossing from your brain into the body. So here, for example, you can see more signs. So look, I'm looking at a pigment. I'm looking at a loop right here. Here's a little loop, and then here's a loop. We don't have that here at all, like not a lot going on. So I know that person is powered over with the left side, which is your right brain. So here's a fun fact. They would maybe like, you know, a salad that looks like this, something they have never seen before. So when I coach people knowing that they're more right brain oriented, I want to keep their creativity. I, I don't tell them exactly what to eat. I give them options so they can create their own uh, meals. Here, for example, you can see way more pigments right here on this side, a little bit more of a, a, like two fires and lines here. So as the left brain, so this person is pretty much a left brain thinker. So they, they need to know their facts, then they're organized, they're planned, and they don't want to be overwhelmed with, you know, uh, spontaneously. And so for them, a salad looks like this. <laughs> so let's go further. I want to teach you today now a little bit about the spiritual ideology. There's no wonder that we say that the pupils are the doorway into your soul, right? But it's also the doorway to the universe. So here's an amazing story that I had. I had a person come to me and she was blind and she insisted to get an ideology reading, but I knew that I couldn't see any fibers or colors or structures, so that, that was gone. And so in this case, I wasn't sure if I, you know, should come out and talk about my spiritual ideology, which at that time I didn't want to talk too much about it because I wanted to make sure that people took took me um, uh, took took my information as accurate, and I didn't want to scare them with the whole spiritual part. But anyway, so this woman comes to me and she insisted. So of course, then I had to just give her a pure spiritual reading, which means in this case. If you want to slightly look into it and look a little away, you can see here a woman's face with bangs and short hair. So you can see that it reflects kind of female face. And since I have nothing else to say, I was saying to her that there is like, you know, the spiritual ideology that's not being known that much. It's a reflection of images or signs that the reader likes to know. Um, so in this case, I ask her about this woman and she says, yeah, that's my mother who passed away on breast cancer. So even like when you look a little further down, you can see here it's kind of like wings. And it looks like he's holding something in a hand. So if you believe or know about archangels, then that definitely looks like Archangel Michael. So I was doing the same story then. I was asking her if she, you know, believes in Archangel Michael. And then she pulled out a necklace. 
and showed it to me and it had Argentile Michael on it as a protector. So you can see um, that pupil is the reflection of our soul. So there are showing up images if the person is ready for the message. There's sometimes, you know, I can take pictures and I don't see anything because maybe that person wasn't just ready for a spiritual message. It only shows up when the person is ready. And there's also a, a nice kind of picture of the NASA picture of exploded, uh, exploded star. I feel like everything has this kind of same kind of direction. Like when you look at this, isn't almost that like kind of like a circular eye, like a pupil coming into the center. So this is when it gets confusing. Are we looking in or out? You know, the darkness is our pupil. And then we look in. I mean, where is the information coming from? And that's where we are at. So an image will be reflected on the pupil lens that will be able to interpret it based on the consciousness of the reader. So Alicia Rocco and Iridaj just mentioned that the pupil can turn into a crystal ball if the soul of the person wishes to share with others. And that's always like that. For example, you can see here that's called look, looks like kind of like a planet. And I asked that person if there's something with the planetary system, if she's, uh, you know, intrigued by it. And at that moment, a woman told me, I was playing with the thoughts for months or even years already to start to study astrology. And I thought that was just fascinating. Then here you can also see, I mean, a little blurry because I know it's coming from my computer to you. But there is a little face from a boy, almost eight years. And when I come at me, I was asking the client about an eight-year-old uh, boy, what there is information for, and unfortunately, it was her son passing away by from cancer. So, it's it, he's still with her, he's still around her spiritually. And then right here, you can see it as like a yellow lamp. It's almost somebody holds up a lamp, right? And I was like, this kind of like figure in the back. But the point is, this is how um, the iris shows us which chakra the person is the weakest and yellow has to do with our solar plexus and with our digestive system and it exactly correlated to that client's um, symptoms that the person came to me to see a urologist so this is just another part now that we discover in urology so how does it look so, so online consultation includes, of course, all free components. So if you would come to my practice or if you want to do online Zoom uh, uh, in consultation, then you would send me a picture taken from your phone. I would send you a YouTube link how to. But then nowadays the digital cameras have become more and more um, powerful. So people sometimes don't even have to come in my practice anymore, especially right now with COVID, I was able to do a lot of online readings. So I would give you a physical, emotional, and spiritual reading. And this is how I look. So here I have a case study from a 45-year-old female. She's an artist. Remember when we talked about when we have more loops and lacunas, we're more artistic oriented? This is also her left eye. So in this case, it's also more her right brain oriented. So physically, she so shows more weak digestive system because she has this hazel eye and they have usually more problems with the digestive system. Emotionally, she shows uh, that ring right around here, which shows that, you know, there's issues more with the elimination of her skin and her lymph system. So in, in the emotional field, it says that somebody's getting under your skin, like some, somebody irritates you, maybe people or the environment or something, you're not feeling comfortable anymore, wherever you live or wherever you are within your old friends. And then she also had a spiritual image, which unfortunately I, I didn't find that picture anymore. It showed a skull in her pupil, which kind of is a little scary when you see that, but it has nothing to do with death. It's actually more a belief of, uh, you know, Mexican uh, sign of skull is a new beginning. So when I ask her about that, it turns out emotionally she didn't want to be on the east coast anymore she had so many more opportunities on the west coast and she was debating to go back and forth but she really truly then kind of made the decision to move to the west coast for the um for her career as an artist so that's gotten under her skin she she, she felt like the people weren't right with her anymore she felt disconnected and she felt, felt more connected to um 
the people in California. And spiritually, that's also Im impressive because at that moment, she also changed her name to her uh, artist name legally. So she actually had a new beginning, which means she literally had a new name. So not only did she move, she also changed her name. So now I'm giving her, you know, information what to do. In the spiritual thing, she already made the changes because she made a, you know, a new start. Emotionally, um, I would suggest that she has also more of a stomach issue. So with the yellow chakra and the skin is associated with the red chakra. So since she has digestive system issue, I went into your digestive system, calmed down the stomach, the digestion, we took some food out that she had hidden allergies and so on. But also the skin, because the skin was so darkened, um, I was trying to give her some crystals for the red chakras or a sound vibrational music uh, on YouTube for the red chakra or the first chakra. And dietary, I told her to eat more easy digestible food, like she needs bitter grains to cleanse the liver because in neurology, the brown color is more associated with the gallbladder and the liver. And I also suggested the cucumber and celery for better lymphatic stimulation. So this is how it works. But usually then um, my clients, they receive, you know, uh, eight or nine page long written reports that I write for them after the one hour consultation. So they have something to hold on to. And then they can read that whole like report again about the iridology uh, assessment, also about the dietary suggestions due to their iridology reading and then also their herbal suggestions as well as the spiritual and emotional lifestyle changes. So health equation is exactly that. It's not all in your DNA that when you have a sign in your adrenals, you have to become adrenal fatigue. No, because the health equation that we really follow as an iridologist that there, it's due to the genetics, the age you feel you are, not the age you really are. <laughs> lifestyle, diet, equals your health. And as you can see, if you're older and you still let your inner child come out and you're laughing really hard and you'll be playful as long as possible, your spirit stays playful, which means it gives you more positive vibration and health within your body. Then also with emotions, you cannot always be the angel. When you feel like people stepping all over you, you do need to have to voice yourself and become a little bit of a devil. So both is important too. And then there is never an eye that wouldn't, you know, have a benefit of drinking some green juice. Here, just a quick, like, little quote that I always like. Keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. So we don't always have to look for that spiritual um, development of our bodies. We have to work on all layers at the same time, physical, emotional, and spiritual layers. Okay? So... Here are just a few products of mine. I may I use herbs and food as my medicine. If you're interested, just go to beardcare.com. But I also um, teach iridology. So if you happen to be in the holistic field and you're like a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, a massage therapist, uh, um, integrated nutritionist, holistic nutritionist, you will all profit of having an extra assessment in your toolkit. And iridology is an assessment. So before you have your client, you know, you want to get as many assessments going as possible so you can really find out where the root cause is of their weakness, why they have all those symptoms, because you definitely in a holistic field don't want to chase symptoms, right? So if you have been listening to this talk today, then I offer you $500 off from my tuition. I have an online course coming up in November 12th or 14th. I know um, that might be just too um, late for you guys now as we're talking, but I have another course coming up probably in December and in January, just always check out my website, centerforiridology.com, and check out when the next date is of my classes. Usually I teach classroom teachings uh, all over the major cities in America, but due to COVID, I changed it all into online teaching. So take advantage of this because once the, you know, we're 
have, we're getting over this COVID, people do want more classroom teaching. So then I would teach in New York, Boston, Miami, Chicago, San Francisco, Philadelphia. Those are the cities where I'm teaching right now. So iridology online courses right now available. It's a live online class. So I'm, it's not a recording because I want to connect with my students. I want to make sure they understand the topics and we follow to get along through the chapters and make sure that everybody understands it. And then also you can also contact me with my, for an online iridology session. For that, I'll offer you a $50 discount. So instead of 220 you would pay 170 which is quite quite affordable for the whole thing the reports the online session and so for that just contact me on bigitcare.com so i hope you enjoyed all that information and um i hope to hear from you thank you so I'm all back. I hope you enjoyed that presentation I showed you. So if you have more information, please reach out, send me an email. If you're interested to study with me, I would be honored to because we are at the IAP are still looking for a lot of practitioners who would like to carry on the torch for iridology. And I'm saying a torch because unfortunately not a lot of holistic people um, choose the assessment tool of the eyes anymore, but I feel like it's been around for thousands of years and it should definitely not die up. So again, call me or email me and check out my website if you're interested for online consultations or for a course. Okay. I was a pleasure uh, talking to you for 30 minutes and um, I hope to hear from you. Bye.